But being such a young country, America is beyond her years when it comes to innovation. So how do you go from agrarian settlements to industrial powerhouse in 200 years or less? Let me tell you in 10 minutes or less. The story starts here, at Saugus Iron Works in Massachusetts. In 1646, that's just like 20 years after the Pilgrims landed at Plymouth, John Winthrop combined the two ingredients necessary for heavy industry, raw material and a power source. Iron ore was mined from bogs and ponds. It was superheated in a furnace that was fed charcoal made from the abundant trees that surrounded them. And then it was pounded by a giant hammer powered by the river turning the water mill. Do you see the beam above you? This was a huge operation, producing roughly a ton of cast iron per day, and at its time, it was one of the most technologically advanced ironworks in the world. Saugus is considered the birthplace of American heavy industry, and it was only the first of many ironworks that began popping up all along rivers throughout the colonies. And soon, a new idea was brewing for how to use these mills. Fast forward to 1790 and we meet Moses Brown, who sees that although we're good at producing our own goods to feed and shelter us, we're importing most of our cloth. He looks at Britain, where we're buying our cloth, and he says they've figured out how to turn cotton into thread with mills. Let's set up our own textile mill, make our own thread. Only problem is, textile milling is Britain's proprietary secret, and they don't let that secret leave the country, until they accidentally did, when they let Samuel Slater slip away to America after working enough years in a British mill to find out all their secrets. Slater helped Moses Brown set up shop in Pawtucket, Rhode Island along the Blackstone River. Using the same toolmakers and machinists that had worked in the iron mills, they built the first successful textile mill in America. Across the state line in Massachusetts, that industry would become legendary. Lowell, the Merrimack River powered mills that took in raw cotton and put out finished cloth all under one roof. To get the raw material in and get the finished product out to market, a series of canals were built and then water power and transportation never compromised each other. Okay, it doesn't sound very loud to me. Well, that Power looms that were utilized here are a marvel of engineering. The complexity is staggering, and the speed at which it all happens, even elements like adding in additional colored threads or making designs in the fabric, that technology was the predecessor of the earliest computers. So it was water that powered these incredible machines, but what happens when you want to power machines and you're not near a water source? Wood had always been the go-to fuel source for industries. Abundant bituminous or soft coal was mined in the U.S. as early as the 1800s, but it was with the uncovering of clean burning hard anthracite coal in northeastern Pennsylvania that coal mining really picked up speed, doubling or even tripling output every decade until finally in 1880, it overtook wood as the country's largest energy source. Don't drop it, okay? I'll be about 20 minutes. In 1900, this is a new modern drill bit. Once the holes are drilled, we put a blasting cap, might be even two or three sticks of dynamite. They go in the holes, just hold that up, but don't press it down. You have to do two things first. You've got to look to your left, yell, fire in the hole. Fire in the hole! With this wonderful source of energy that you can just tote along wherever you go, it made possible the incredible technology of the steam engine in its most mobile expression for railroads. The railroad industry was both a massive consumer of energy and a great disseminator of energy. It made obsolete the old canals that were unusable in winter, and it provided a cheaper, safer way to deliver the goods that America was producing to even further and further corners of the country. The steam dome, uh, 
green dome and the sand dome. And the sand dome has a pipe that runs all the way here and across here. Right in front of the wheel, there's a little pipe that if you open the valve, it will drop a whole bunch of sand on the uh, on the track. So if you're on like, a little slippery spot with the rain recently, it'll give you a whole bunch more traction. the little engine that could and this is the I am a big important I've just hauled books and newspapers and welcome to the little red caboose my future home where there is a awesome folding table folds right up onto the wall there's a cute little wood stove there's a bathroom sorta well really sorta Oh, this is a pantry. Upper level. Oh, mommy, look. Just the chairs. That'd make a mommy, great bed. The fridge. No, just some shelves. And oh, that would have been here. a back porch. No. Oh, so cute. Pullman car. lived and it also sparked the ingenuity of entrepreneurs who were ready to tackle each new problem that it presented. It was in the railway business that young Thomas Edison figured out his first clever invention, a perfection of a telegraph machine that he used as an operator at the station. His improvements made other telegraph operators very happy and Edison, with his unique combination of salesmanship and science, knew that there were as of yet unknown products that the market would find useful and desirable. The original phonograph. Mary had a little lamb. The original earbuds. The original amplified violin. That is the original talking doll. An automatic record changer. What will he think of next? Oh my gosh. But no, it's not. It's a waffle baker. <gasps> also a speed toaster. Well, he made cartridge boxes. Cartridge boxes for Max. Edison pioneered the music industry and the movie industry, making the first movies here in his Black Mariah movie studio that turned on a wheel to optimize sun exposure. He created the world's first industrial research laboratory, and his on-site library is three stories tall and includes 10,000 books. His interest wasn't in theoretical research, but in developing and delivering products that would make people's lives better. Thomas Edison and America's other great industrial innovators, from iron to textiles to steam and more, perceived the need, tried, failed, and tried again, and made possible the fantastic. <laughs> 